There's no question that the Ukrainians have agency. I, I don't dispute that. And my view all along is that if the Ukrainians were smart, what they would do is divorce themselves from the United States, right? They've hitched their wagon to the United States. Uh, you're quite confident that the Russians will lose in Ukraine the way they lost uh, in Afghanistan. I, I would not bet a lot of money on that, but I would note that even if the Russians lose in the process, they will destroy Ukraine. And from Ukraine's point of view, that's not a good thing. This is why my view is that Ukraine should have long ago divorced itself from the United States and worked out a modus vivendi with Russia. My view is if you're a reasonably small power in the international system, and you live next door to a gorilla, you have to go to great lengths to accommodate that gorilla. And the last thing you want to do is poke that gorilla in the eye, because the gorilla will do great damage to you, and it probably will never forget. I don't know if you're old enough to remember when Fidel Castro came to power in 1959, but shortly thereafter, we put sanctions on Fidel Castro and on Cuba. And those sanctions are basically still on Cuba. We've never gotten over the fact that Cuba behaved in ways that we considered to be unacceptable. And I think you have a similar situation here. And my view is, yes, the Ukrainians have agency, but if they were smart, they'd divorce themselves from the United States and try to work out a modus vivendi with Russia. And in international politics, States usually pay attention to international law and they pay attention to moral precepts as long as they're in their strategic interests. But if there's a conflict between international law and a country's strategic interests, the country will always privilege its strategic interests and international law and human rights will be pushed off the table. This is why I think it's not very helpful to talk about rights. When you talk about whether Russia has the right to have a buffer state or Ukraine has the right to have its own foreign policy, these are concepts that, in my opinion, get you into all sorts of trouble. In the international system, might makes right. And the United States would never tolerate a situation where Canada or Mexico invited in a legal way China to bring military forces into Toronto or Mexico City. We have a Monroe Doctrine, which is in our strategic interest. And our Monroe Doctrine says no distant great power is allowed to put military forces in the Western Hemisphere, period, end of story. What the Russians are doing here is they're basically articulating their own version of the Monroe Doctrine. They're saying you cannot turn Ukraine into a Western bastion on our border. It has nothing to do with rights. It doesn't matter whether Ukraine has the right to do this or that. We're saying they can't do it. Just like we're saying Cuba can't inv invite the Soviets to bring military forces into the Western Hemisphere. So for me, when you talk about great power politics, rights in the final analysis just don't matter. Might makes right. And the United States is a mighty powerful country. It's a mighty powerful country on purpose. And it does whatever it thinks is in its strategic interest. And if the rights say that's OK to do, good. But if the rights are at odds with what's in our strategic interest, we do what's in our strategic interest. International politics is a different domain than domestic politics. I'm not in favor of going around and beating up on other states, and I'm not in favor of wanton violence and so forth and so on. And I do think that what is happening in Ukraine is absolutely horrible. It makes me sick to my stomach. But on the other hand, I think it's very important to understand basic realist logic and Americans have a terribly difficult time putting themselves in Putin's shoes. And this is because Americans tend to think in terms of rights and in terms of American exceptionalism and all these other ideas that I think get us into trouble. 
the trouble America causes by thinking of itself as an exceptional nation is correct. I just don't want to think that way in IR, and I don't want to think about rights when it comes to international relations. I think that the question that it is really on the table here is whether or not with sanctions and the costs of war, just the cost of losing people and fighting in Ukraine, that coupled with economic sanctions can inflict enough punishment on the Russian people and the oligarchs that they rise up against Putin. This is the question. And I think there are two reasons that's not going to happen. States are able to sustain huge amounts of punishment and the population does not rise up against the ruler. You want to think about what we did to Japan in World War II. You want to think about what we did to Germany. You want to think about the literature on sanctions, economic sanctions. Look at Iran. It's amazing what we've done to Iran. Look at Cuba. There have been sanctions on Cuba forever, right? And these countries don't throw up their hands. So the first point I would make to you is nationalism is a very powerful force. And I think that the Russian people will rally around Putin. I get like a thousand emails every day. I can't even open up all the emails I get. But I've gotten a number of emails from Russians. These are educated people uh, who are not hostile to me in any way. And I read those emails to say that you want to understand that you Americans are threatening Mother Russia. And what's going on here is not simply a case of Putin misbehaving and us liking the Americans. And what's going to happen here is we're going to overthrow Putin. The emails I'm getting, and this is not a scientific sample, but it is consistent with my general point about nationalism, is that the more we push against the Russians in Ukraine, and the more we threaten the regime, the more that people will rally around Putin. Now, again, I could be proved wrong on that, but my bet is that he'll be able to withstand the sanctions. It's not clear that we'll be able to punish him that much over the long term. But then again, even if we do punish him, do you think that's going to bring the Russian people to their knees or Putin to his knees? I wouldn't bet a lot of money on that.